So in this one, we're going to talk about permutations with constraints. So, uh, all right. So a constraint is a restriction of some sort, right? Where you have to take care of something, where you have to do something, it's, it's, it's a must. Now, here we've got five people. We've got person A, B, C, D, and E, and they're seated on a bench. Now, in how many ways can they be arranged if, now there's these if statements. <clears throat> so, if E is seated in the middle. So, let's have five benches. Sorry, a bench with five seats. One possibility is taken. Alright, so one possibility is taken because person E has to sit here. So there's only one way that you could arrange that. Now, the key is place the restriction first. All right, so that's what you want to do. Yeah, that, that doesn't mean place the restriction first factorial. That means place the restriction first, like an excited statement. Okay, so let's change it to a smiley face since factorial is now an exclamation mark. Okay, so now how many people do we have left? Four. So how many people can sit in the first spot? Four. Four. How many people are left to sit in the second spot? Three. Three. How many people are left to sit in this third spot? Two. Or second last spot, I should say. And then there's one person left. So then we're going to multiply all of these values together and get 24. 24. So there's 24 different ways that we can arrange this. Okay. Now... Person A and B are best of friends. They're dating right now. They have to sit together. All right, so there's still five seats available. But what's happened now is A and B must sit together. So we're kind of like using up two seats that are next to each other, and we're, we have to look at it as one seat. So A and B can sit either here or they could sit here, or they could sit here, or they could sit there, right? Yes. So what are all the different ways that A and B can sit together? So there's four places, right? There's four places that A and B can sit together. And that's if they sit like a, like A here and B here, or A here and B here, or A here and B here, or A here and B here. So what's another way that you could have them sit? B and A. B and A. So you could have, um, and another four, four, B and A. Because they could also sit B and A, B and A, B and A, or B and A, right? Okay. Now, the five spots that we originally started with are in reality how many spots now? Three. If A and B, if we always chunk two seats together, how many places do we really have? Like if I were to... So I have one spot here, because A and B has to sit together. They're either A and B or B and A, yeah. and then the left is rest for the the rest is left for the other guys. So how many other spots are left? The left is rest. The left is rest. So this is actually it looks like it's it's four spots, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got four factorial ways that I could arrange the five people, but four factorial times two because it could either be A and B or B and A. All right, so then I've got four factorial times two factorial. as my different ways of sitting. So that is a total of 48. So 24 times two. Okay, now that's when A and B had to sit together. 
Now, A and B, they had a huge fight. They broke, uh, up. They broke up. And now they do not want to sit near each other at all. They are not going to sit next to each other. So this one says A and B must not sit together. Okay? So instead of looking at all the different ways that they can not sit together, we could look at all the ways that they can sit together with no restriction and then subtract the ways that they can sit together. Okay? So all the ways, what are all the ways with no restriction? And we could minus the ways that they sit together. Okay, and that's going to give the not together. So this is, yeah, that's five factorial because there's five different ways that you can arrange them. Sorry, five seats. And then this is together, we got that it's 48, right? So I'm just going to write four factorial times two. And that gives us all the ways that can not together. So this is 120 minus 48 and that equals, sorry here you guys might want to see that. So 120 minus 48 is 72. So there's 72 ways that they don't have to sit together. 72 ways to not sit together. Okay. <clears throat> now let's look at some more constraints. So if you want, um, do you guys want to pause and try these questions on your own? And then we'll come back to it and finish this off. Yeah? Okay, sounds good. So read the question and see what you can figure. Okay, so we'll finish off this page. So, yeah, well, no, we have uh, permutations with cases to do next. So here we've got three different calculus textbooks, three, five different bio books, and four different economic books on the shelf. So how many ways can we arrange the books if there's no restrictions? So that means we've got 12 spots, right? Because we have three, three calc books, uh, four economic books, and five bio books. So in total, we've got 12 books. How many different ways can we arrange these 12 books? Well, 12 it's 12 factorial. So that actually equals, oh, one, six, zero, zero. Okay, different ways to arrange the books. That can take a long time to actually try all the different ways that it you might like the best look. Why, why, I don't know, I don't know why, but you wouldn't do that. That's not reality. Okay, now how many different ways can you arrange the books if they must be arranged by subject area? So basically that means you've got, let's say we've got calculus and then you've got economics chunked together and then you've got your bio chunked together, okay? So how many different ways can you arrange the calc books? How many different ways can you do the economic books? And how many different ways can you do the bio books? Okay, so for each of those, now, how many different ways can we arrange these three spots? Three factorial, right, so we can swap those around. So then our final answer is going to be 3 factorial times 3 factorial times 4 factorial times 5 factorial and the total number of ways is one, zero, three, six, eight, oh. all right okay beautiful now 
For the last one, how many ways can you arrange the books if all the calculus books must be on the right end of the shelf? So you've got the calc textbooks are on the right here. How many different ways can we arrange the calc books? Three factorial. Three factorial. And then how many different ways can we arrange? We've got how many other books? Nine. Nine, Nine other books. So I can arrange them in nine factorial different ways, right? Yes. So then that gives us nine factorial times three factorial. So I'm going to keep that on that side. So now it's 2177280 ways to arrange the, cal the, the books. Sorry, I should say zero and not O. O takes less time. You're right. O is more efficient. Okay. No. So that's it for that's it for permutations with constraints. Next is permutations with cases. Is that it? Are we done yet? Um, we should, I hope so. Careful now. Are we there yet?